Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, and um, it's very nearly Christmas, and this is a fantastic puzzle from a picture by GB Pack, who writes to us as Aaron Rodgers, but I think we've established he's not the actual Green Bay Packers quarterback, just a fan, but um, this is so clever. I love that a couple of simple rules, and we have this incredible picture for a puzzle called A Way in a Manger. Um, I mean, I presume this is the Virgin Mary kneeling down here uh, beside the crib and either holding the head or praying, and there's the baby Jesus. Uh, it's brilliant. There's, there's the star above the manger. I think it's fantastic. Actually, it reminds me of one of my favorite poems. Maybe I'll read that at the end. Simon reads poetry and seems, <laughs> seems to be popular. I might give it a try. Um, if I remember, and uh, if I do the puzzle, okay. So um, we'll get to that in a minute. Do have a look at all the stuff we've got going under the uh, description field. There's also our merchandise, which is under the video. Um, we've got Patreon, uh, so many generous Patreons. Um, of course, you're watching this. If you're watching this when it comes out, you are missing our live stream of Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, which is going on now, but you can catch up on that. And if you watch this first, you are one of my favorite people, although you all are. Um, so we have, yeah, we have all of the various content on Patreon, including the Puzzle Pyramid Hunt. That is an absolutely brilliant hunt. We are getting one or two correct entries and well done to anybody who's got through it already. Uh, we're giving you till the end of the year. That's just eight days, I'm afraid. Um, and of course, the days have started getting longer now. So uh, it is daylight outside my window, but I don't think it will be for very long. Um, I'm recording this about 2.30, so I think we've got an hour left of daylight, maybe a fraction more. Anyway, so hopefully we won't see that coming down while I'm still recording. But who knows? Simon did a movie-length video yesterday. Do check that out if you have the chance, brilliant tall cat puzzle, um, but viciously difficult. Anyway, so what are the rules on this one? This is called Away in a Manger. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits along an arrow sum to the number in the circle. So those three add up to that. I guess on this arrow, there could be a repeat digit in those two cells. And the arrow sums to that. Neighbouring digits on a green line must have a difference of at least five. So these two must have a difference of at least five. And ooh, there's quite a lot around here. That those two must, those two must, um, etc. Any two digits that are linked together by a green line in neighbouring cells must have a difference of at least five. And that's the rule called German whispers, which um, I guess maybe if if... Mary is whispering to Jesus. She might be saying something like Heilige Nacht, Stille Nacht, but uh, I'll leave that to your imagination. Now do give it a try on the link under the video. Um, I think this had two stars on Logic Masters Germany, but I'm not sure about that. You can probably judge from the video link how difficult it is, but I'm going to give it a start now. Let's get cracking. Um, and much as I love the idea that a puzzle is created like this with no digits in the grid and just those two simple rules of arrow sudoku and german whispers it doesn't give us much to start with so what we sometimes do then is color the lines because a german whisper line must alternate between digits above five and digits below five and I like to put the low ones in blue and the high ones in orange, which is a bit like temperatures. However, I don't know which ones along this line are high and low yet. So I'm going to color them like that. I suppose this is six, seven, eight or nine. So I'm going to make that orange. Um, this might not be. You could have one, one, two there. So let's steady on there. Right, this, this is going to have one of each in the circle. So that's going to use up all four green, or sorry, on the line. That's going to use up all four greens in the box. This is going to have, ah, this is going to have two greens and two purples along here. 
because of the alternating. And that's going to use up all four greens, so this becomes purple. So we can do the alternating along that. I mean, we don't know what's high and low yet, but now we've filled four greens here. So these two in box nine are five and purple. That's the sort of collocation you get in Cracking the Cryptic. Um, ah, these two. Yes, this is lovely. These two, the feet of the crib. These are the same as each other because they're both opposite to that. And now we know they can't be green because that wouldn't be five green in the row. So there's only going to be four green or when we get them corrected for, for colouring, there's going to be four blue and four orange in every row, column and box. But for now, four green and four purple is enough. That tells us the feet of the crib are purple and that gives us all the colouring on the German whisper lines in the puzzle. Right. Yes, and this is going to tell us whether they're high or low as well, because these two, that's lovely, these two can't both be high. Imagine if they were the, the least high they could be. They'd be 6 and 7. This would have to be at least a 14, and Mary is not that big-headed. So green becomes blue now. That is low. Purple becomes orange. That is high. This, I don't know, actually. Yes, I do. This number here can't be low. It's seeing four blues in the row, I think. So that is five or six. This is eight or nine. This pair is either one, two or one, three. There's definitely a one in there. Ah, that has an impact here. Yeah, these two, now the least they can be is two and four. They couldn't be two and three or you couldn't fill both those cells. They can't have a one because there's got to be a one in there to keep this down to nine or less. So these must be at least two and four and that becomes high. Oh, I've just only just noticed um, that I have made all of these half purple, half orange and I didn't want to do that. Right, so there we go. They're all high now. So now that's given me all four high in column five. Can I use that? Possibly not. What about these two? One is orange and one is five. I'm not planning to give five a colour at the moment, but might need to at some point. Do these have to be blue? They're likely. Well, no, maybe they're not, actually. They'd have to be two and four or three and four. That would be six or seven. Oh, maybe that is the thing worth looking at. Right, this number sees all of these. How low can it be? No, look, this row, the blues. Where's four amongst these blues? That's a good question. If four was there, it would need nine on both sides, and that would be impossible in the column. Same is true there. If four was here, it would need nine in both those positions, and that's impossible in the row. Here's our first digit in the grid. We get a four there. Nine there, therefore. And these others have to be one, two, or three. This one, does that see... Yes, that sees two in the same box, so that can't be six. Oh, but this one sees two that can't see each other, so they could both be one and that could be six. Ow, oh, bother. Um, six, seven, or eight there. I suppose, no, this could be five. Um, right, I started thinking, trying to think about this digit. That is going to see, actually, this could still be as much as three. If you had nine, eight, nine, eight, that can still be three. That's annoying. These ones can easily be fours because you could have nine in both those positions or both those. This can't be a four, not just because of that, but because it's seeing two cells that see each other. Same over there. This can't be six. This can't be six. This can be six. Oh, up the middle. This can't be six. 
So 6 is either there or there. Now if 6 is there, that gives us a 2, 4. We know that that becomes 1, 3. This will be 5, that will be 9. This will be very useful if that was 6. Alternatively, this is 6 in the central column. And then this is a 1. What happens then? If this is 6, that's a 1. Then this isn't a 1. Oh, that's, that's quite interesting. If this is 6, this is 1. That isn't a 1, so this can't be a 6. So 6 in row 7, I'm assuming this is a 6. Let me just actually... Well, no, let me, let me see if I can see what it does. That would put 6 here. That would make this a 5 and this a 5. Oh, that's quite interesting. If this was 6, we'd get a 1 here. But more important... Oh, yeah, we'd get 6 here. Ah, it feels like this is powerful. Why? I don't know. Six there forces that not to be a six. So that makes that a six. Then you get a six in one of those positions. I can't see why not. I feel there's something going on there. Okay, but 6 here is the alternative. That read needs a 2-4 pair. 1-3 here. That needs a 5 here. So again, 6. Oh, hang on, what? So this is always a 5, is that right? 6 here means that's a 5, straightforwardly, in the box. 6 here makes that 2, 4, makes that 1, 3, and that makes that a 5. So this is always a 5. Wow, wherever 6 is in the central column, that's it. That's, my, that's what my brain must have been getting ahead of me. So now I can place 5 there and there. This is blue. In fact, that is a no, it's not blue. We've had all four blue. That is orange. Uh, six, seven, or eight, obviously. Now, five here means one of these is blue and one is orange. Five, ah, five here. This sees all four orange in the column, so that's blue. One of those is blue and one of those is orange, so that's orange. One each here. Oh, I don't know which way round they go. Bother. Now this can still be 1, 2, because we didn't resolve which of these were 6. We just resolved whichever of them was a 6, put a 5 there. Which was very much not what I was trying to prove when I was looking at that. 6 is now definitely here. So that's 7, 8 or 9. 6 is in one of these two cells in the row. Um, oh, where's 4 in box 9? 4 is in one of those two cells. And that's got to be next to 9 on a line, so that's in one of those. We kind of knew that anyway. This is 1, 2, or 3. Where's 4 in this row now? Bingo! It's got to go there. Yes, that's correct. Doesn't really help, but placing a single digit... I don't think this puzzle is that easy, by the way. Placing a single digit in this is always useful. Oh! Right, this is one, two, or three. It can't be a four anymore. Now, what are these two going to be? If they're both blue, they've got to involve four. In fact, whatever... 
Yeah, the minimum they can add up to, given these two cells, is 5. So the maximum this cell can be is 4, and it can't be 4, so it's 1, 2, or 3. I can colour that. Um, this is at least 6. That I don't think that's actually changed. OK. Um, this is not 9, because it's C's a 9. Same here. Can I get any more done on this? One of these, at least, is blue. Oh, that's orange. Why haven't I coloured that? Could have done that ages ago. I thought I'd... I thought I had. Right, in this column, those three are blue at the top because we've got four oranges and five done. Um, that's given me three blues in row three. This is... Well, it could be anything, it could still be six. Actually, it couldn't be six, because one of those is a one. If that was a six, both of these would be a one. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, this is nice. If that was a six, both of these would be a one. And suddenly that would stop one being in those cells, and it has to be in those cells. So that's not a six. That is seven, eight, or nine. And in this column now, there's only one place for a six, and it's here. Good grief. So that is surrounded by ones. This one now is not a one. I still don't know whether this is eight or nine, but this is not a six now. Um, every time I get a digit in this, it doesn't lead to a big unlocking. It just keeps everything frozen up. Right, that's not a one. I should have seen that. So this is not a 6 either. So now that's part of a 7, 8, 9 triple. That's not a 1 anymore. Um, right, now this can't be 2, 3. We knew that. Does it have to have a 2? I suppose it, it's got to have a low digit. 4, 5 is the lowest or the highest numbers that could be there. But this can still be six. In fact, still we've got this issue that one of these is a six. Which one is it? I don't know. Ah, oh, uh, no, that could still be a six with ones either side. It's a bit confusing. Oh, that's not a one anymore because of this one that for some reason I never did any pencil mark adjustment having found it. Anyway, um, right, so that's two or three. So this isn't six anymore. Yeah, that's right. So that's a seven, eight pair. So this, these are from 2, 3, and 6, and that's a triple. And that doesn't tell me anything except that this digit isn't a 6. 6 is definitely in one of those two cells. Right, 2 or 3 there. If it was a 3, it would always be seeing 8 and 9. So those would be 8. That would be 9. does seem to work still, frustratingly. Oh, come on, come on. Something must give here. I, you know, we're at the point in the puzzle where there's... You're going to get a lot from the next deduction, the next proper deduction. I feel that. But we have to make it first. Um, if 
fives. These can't be fives. These are orange and blue. But I don't know the order. Oh, come on, find something. This one is high, but it could be any high number. And this can still be six. Oh, this can't be six anymore. Aha, since that became two or three. Right, so seven, eight, nine, triple up the middle. That is six, now that is helpful. Now that has to be two, four. Let's make them blue while we're here. This one becomes a three, now we know it total of Mary's head is a nine. Um, we get nines in those two. This can't be a three because one of the things it touches is a seven. Uh, so this is three or four. That's not seven. Um, come on, come on. This can still be a six. I don't want it to be a six. This can't be a 4, because that can't be a 9. So that's 1 or 2. And that, oh no, they, this can't be a 9. Yes, that's right. So this isn't 4 either. So that's 1, 2, or 3. So in this column, 1, 2, 3, triple, that's where 4 is. 2 there. Now, 5 in this row is actually easy now thanks to the colouring. It's got to be there. This is orange. I don't know how long that's been available. Probably a little while. Um, six, right. Nine, one, two, five, seven, eight. So these are from three, four, and six. Two. I never quite know what to think about next. Um, right, these are all blue, so everything else in this column is either orange or five, and we know that this one is therefore orange, and that one's blue. And this is now one or two. Ah, so one of these two is definitely a three in this box, so that's not a three, but one of them is a three, and they're both seeing this, so that's got to be eight doesn't make this 7. It stops this being 8. If that was a 3, this would be 9, but if that's a 3, we're all right. 8 there gives us 7 here. Um, 7 there stops this being a 7. Oh, that 9 sees that cell. Right, so 8 there, 9 there. The only place for 4 is here. Box 9 is finished. Hurrah. Two there, that can't be a two. Oh, those aren't done. This can't be nine or eight. That's a seven. This is a nine. This must be six here. That's a seven because it sees eight now. This can't be three because of the seven. So that's two, which does this whole box. One there, three there, that works all right. One over here, which is fine. Um, sorry, I'm not used to my arrow keys on the new the new laptop. That's a two. So there's a three six pair. This one is eight. That works all right. This can't be eight or six anymore. Um, right now, that was progress. This oh these can't be four. So it's another three six pair. Four two five seven one three. These are six eight nine. I can color the lot of them. These ones, oh, that's become a seven. Um, two, three, four. So this is one, five, seven. They all have different colors. Oh, that one can't be a one because we seem to have got a one, two pair. In fact, that is a one. Two, doesn't change that. This can't be two. Oh, fives, what happened to fives? That's where I started thinking about this. This can't be seven. Could still be a six with a one here. Ah, these have to add up to at least seven now one and two have gone. So this can't be three. This is eight or nine. 
These must have a 3 in it, and either 4 or 5. That's good. Feels good. 3, 1, 8, 2. Two in the central box is here, just by Sudoku. One is here, that's even easier. Um, that's a seven, that's even easier. And then a three five pair at the top, so five's up there. So one of these is a five, and these two are not fives. And they see one, two, three, and four in the box, so they're orange. And in fact, they're eight and nine, and they this one is a naked single. Eight and then nine above it. This is now a 4-6 pair, which I can't colour. This is an 8-9 pair, which I can. That gives us an 8-9 pair in the top row, which makes this one a 6. Oh, this is such a good puzzle. Um, oh, he says as he, as he suddenly gets stuck. 8-9, that can't be a 7. What have we got in this row? An 8-9 pair and a 7. Not much else, actually. Oh, this pair is five and seven. Oh, we know the order of those. There we go. Uh, it's not that, but we do know the order of those, and it's not the order I just wrote in. Seven and five. Let's do them that way around. Uh, orange there. Oh, I should turn off. I must have come up with the conflict checker. I want that off, because I don't want to be told that sort of thing. I need to find it out for myself. That's a three. That's fixed the 6-3 pair. Ah, still with the buttons, 6-3 pair there. 6-5-4-3. There must be some naked singles appearing here now. Oh no, that is fixed, 6 and 3. This is a 5-4 pair that's not resolved. That is a naked single six. I knew there would be some. And next to it is a one with an eight there. That's not an eight. Um, oh, I haven't colored things for a while. So those can be low and blue. Sixes can be orange and high. Um, that's become a two. So that means this is two, three, four equals nine. Um, that fixes 7 and 9. I think we're still... In fact, have we finished the lines? I think we have. All the German whisper lines are done. This is an 8, 9, 8 there, 9, 8 here. 4, 6 is resolved. That's not a 4. That's done 3, 4. Yeah, that fixes 5, 4, so all the bottom 6 boxes are over. This is a seven. That fixes the triple in column nine. Um, what have we got here? We've got one, six, and five. They must all be write-ins now. Right, now let's get colouring. One, three, four are low. Those ones are low. Highs are here. And there, I hope I haven't missed any other things out. That's a five. That's three, four, three, two. And there we go. What a brilliant puzzle. That's really good. I mean, to be thematic, to be, let's just, let's just take it out and have a look at at the picture again. Oh no, without the colours. Um, control A and get rid of the colours. There we go. That is brilliant that that picture, which is so perfect, yields, yields that perfect puzzle. And I am going to read you, um, I think it's called The Oxen by Thomas Hardy, which goes Christmas Eve and 12 of the clock. Now they are all on their knees, the elder said, as we sat in a flock by the embers in hearthside ease. We pictured the meek, mild creatures where they dwelt in their strawy pen, nor did it occur to one of us there to doubt they were kneeling then. 
so fair a fancy few would weave in these years, yet I feel if someone said on Christmas Eve, come see the oxen kneel in the lonely Barton by yonder coombe our childhood used to know, I should go with him in the gloom, hoping it might be so. And that's a poem for tomorrow, really, but it's already for tomorrow for many of you. And uh, with some Christmas spirit, I wish you a very happy Christmas Eve tomorrow. And we will be back with more puzzles. Don't worry about that. But as it is, bye for now.